Who are we kidding here? You can run CSGO on a computer made of potatoes, lemons, and a pizza crust motherboard. But in all seriousness, Counter-Strike Global Offensive runs off a more advanced version of the venerable but old Source engine, used by Valve for every one of their releases since 2004. Despite using a more advanced version or branch, some would say, of the Source engine, CSGO, like its forebears, still has very lean system requirements, specifically stating an Intel Core 2 Duo and a 256MB DirectX 9.0C graphics solution. You can absolutely play CSGO on 12-year-old PC graphics hardware if you so desire. I've even ran it on a Radeon X1600 XT for shits and giggles, but with a lack of overall horsepower, struggles to run it at even 480p. However, even with such an old DirectX standard in play, CSGO is graphically a much richer game than older Source titles like Counter-Strike Source before it. With the expected jumps in geometry, texture quality, and better lighting came ambient occlusion and global outdoor shadow mapping, both adding extensive richness and depth to the visuals. These were mainstream features even in past-gen console games, so to see them in a 2012 console and PC release wasn't unsurprising. But these were highly welcomed advances over CS Source. Where CSGO truly comes into its own is of course on the platform that gave birth to the phenomena in the first place. With the 360 and PS3 versions stuck at 720p and 30fps, the PC version is unleashed to fly as fast as technology and wallets allow it. Being tied to console performance but having Source Engine's efficiency means circa 2012 budget gaming GPUs, like the Radeon 7750, can drive CSGO well above the 60fps mark at 1080p at all times, as long as MSAA is kept off. The Radeon RX 550, the real reason why we're here talking about CSGO in this video, is practically just a faster clock 7750 with more memory in the same 512 shaders, 32 texture mapping units, and 16 ROPs. Aside from the improved Polaris GCN architecture, the RX 550 sports a 50% max jump in clock speeds against the standard Radeon 7750. Consequently, the RX 550 delivers well north of 60fps at 1080p, even with up to 8x MSAA most of the time, but I do prefer the extra FPS that comes with 2x MSA instead. If you're so inclined to push the resolution, 2560x1440 is the practical limit for CSGO on the RX 550. With the MSAA left off, you can still maintain 60 FPS, though I still prefer 1080p for the extended frame rates, which is going to tighten up input latency even on 60Hz monitors. Fascinatingly, I tried CSGO at 4K through AMD's driver-based virtual super resolution mode, and surprisingly the performance was nowhere near as bad as I expected it to be, often being completely playable depending on the map. Plenty of moments would pull the frame rate to well below 30 FPS, making 4K purely impractical without imparting massive degrades in image quality. It's well beyond the scope of this budget graphics card. Counter-Strike Global Offensive was one of those games AMD spoke of when marketing the RX 550 as an eSports graphics card, and it definitely delivers the goods. What is tentative, however, is the migration of CSGO to the Source 2 engine due out sometime this year. Even if using the same assets, the core engine could present itself more challenging to the CPU side of things, affecting game execution and graphics driver performance, the latter of which is a notorious weak spot for AMD graphics. The loss of those extra frames above 60 doesn't sound like a huge loss, but we'll certainly feel it during control inputs, even in minor dips south of 60 FPS. Optimistically, software efficiency has always been a Valve hallmark, and I sincerely doubt we'll have a slow executing mess dropped on our heads. On the plus side, Source 2 uses Vulkan, not DirectX, of which AMD's graphics absolutely shine at running, which serves as a good indicator for more good times with the RX 550. We'll just have to keep an eye out. When CSGO gets migrated over to Source 2, you can be sure I'll be testing it again, so be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching.